So once again, welcome everyone. So let's uh, today talk about visual testing, why it is such a big deal. And uh, we'll also give you uh, some tips on how to achieve the best results when you're doing any type of uh, visual validations in test rigor. So first of all, I'm sure that many of you have tried various tests, other automation frameworks, and uh, most of them, especially those frameworks that are not specifically built for end-to-end -end testing, they do not have any types of visual testing at all, right? At the same time, uh, visual testing and uh, the functionality of it uh, lies at the core of test rigorous techniques, helping you to create more robust and uh, also more meaningful end-to-end -end tests. So, First piece, of course, is the uh, page HTML structure. So as most of you know, in test rigor, you don't typically need to use any details of implementation. With many other test animation frameworks, you would have to click inspect to go to developer tools and then um, grab a locator for each element, kind of like that. Um, and it wouldn't be an issue with a simple static page, but websites nowadays are quite complex. And you'll often see uh, dynamic elements that constantly change their IDs, shadow DOMs, iframes, and uh, all of this fun stuff. Um, and so normally uh, locating these elements can be a kind of a nightmare taking a lot of time. And the other thing is not all test automation tools can even reliably support them. And so this is where visual testing um, comes into play. And one test trigger can do is locate any of these elements used in different techniques. Um, for example, OCR, uh, which, as you know, stands for uh, optical character recognition. but Let's get to a couple of examples. So let's see how, for example, test trigger can detect uh, drop downs on the page. And if you think about it, this can be very tricky for the software to make it flawless without specifying any locators because they don't necessarily always look like a drop down. You'll find it working really well, though. So, for example, you're filling in your address. Uh, form, and there's a drop down to select a state or a country you're from. And your command will be very simple. Um, for example, select CA, California in our case, from state. That's your test trigger command. That's it. Um, or another example I have here is from uh, Amazon homepage. So I'm telling test trigger to select books from the drop down um, and then press enter so here you would actually notice it's kind of impressive so the command we can open up here it says select books from all departments right so what's interesting is it's actually not even all departments it says all if you can see here um, but, uh, but because um, test rigor sort of analyzes all of the possible locators for each element, um, it makes it possible to have this flexibility. Okay, uh, what if the page you're working on has a very confusing structure and you're not able to click on the element using regular commands. There is a nice workaround to make it happen. So for example, here, when clicking on the element, you can specify using OCR or using OCR only. Uh, the difference would be that in the second case, Test trigger will not use the page DOM structure at all to locate the element you need. And uh, 
in the using OCR, it will be both the page structure and and the OCR and techniques. And same same thing goes for assertions. So you can say um, check that page contains an element, and also add using OCR or OCR only. And um, we have a lot of settings, some of which you can apply on the test level, like the OCR I just uh, mentioned, and the others will be on the test suite level. So now let's briefly look into the test suite settings. Um, so in, if you go to um, the settings in advanced section, um, you'll see options on how test rigor will um, guess dropdowns and classify buttons. So you can see here in drop down detection strategy. Uh, we can use machine learning, um, can be optimistic, can be pessimistic, right? So um, for again, for most cases, you can just keep it default um, if it's um, if you have some like specific dropdowns on the uh, application you're working with, then you can um, try to choose a different setting. And same things for uh, same thing goes for button classification. So it can also use uh, machine learning or not use it. And uh, for that, actually, you can see. Here, so there's our um, all, all sorts of uh, buttons commonly used, uh, making it easier for machine learning algorithms to um, classify the buttons and guess the buttons you need. All right, so um, here on this tab, you also see how to process clicks right here. And uh, you can also um, check a checkbox to only use OCR for processing clicks, but we don't normally recommend it. Um, generally, you wouldn't need it, and you can just specify OCR inside a command for for those specific elements that you really want to use there. Now let's take a look at what types of visual testing assertions you can do. You can for example, compare um, compare the screen to the uh, to the previous to the previous uh, version. And here, here's a very simple test case. Um, so it says compare screen to previous version, right? So when you uh, create this test for the first time, um, it won't essentially do anything. It will take a screenshot. And during each following test run, it will compare the new screenshot to the previous one. Um, so what test rigor does is um, pixel by pixel comparison. And sometimes you also might want to specify an allowance as well as how you want the, to treat the discrepancy error. And um, this will also help you to specify in which case you would like your test to be marked as failed. In case you need more complex uh, visual comparisons, you can also use Apply tools for that matter. We have an integration with them. And they do have a lot of specific features such as layouts, for example. Um, another cool feature that uh, is that you can just simply take a screenshot of an image you want to click on and store it in the uh, test data section in test trigger settings. And that would be particularly helpful for cases where any given image or icon doesn't have a good, easy way to be referred to. Um, again, it makes your life a lot easier. Um, so other examples where visual testing is aiding us in the, the testing process is, of course, 
error reporting. So for example, to trigger can detect if a page looks broken to a user because images did not load or because CSS failed to load. And uh, you can tailor the settings in the error reporting section right here. Um, so you can, for example, test from the same domain or test everything. So this would be, uh, th those settings would be particularly helpful for, for example, um, if you have um, third party, uh, third party integrations on your website, uh, maybe some ads. So you can tailor if you want to test for those or not when when images are loading. All right, so to sum it up, uh, visual recognition adds us uh, element detection, things such as pop-ups, um, especially when pop-ups appear at any random moment on your website and then disappear in a couple of seconds. Error reporting um, and also making sure that the page or certain elements on the page look the same as before. All right, so hope that was helpful.